good teacher. And uh, okay, so just to let everyone know that we're on the Thursday, November 5th, 2015. This is the afternoon teaching of the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute. And we'll be listening to Mr. Keshe um, discussing the blueprint uh, teaching and we hopefully have some uh, blueprint teaching devices to show today. Okay, Mr. Keshe, I think you're ready there. Go ahead. Yes, good afternoon, good day to you. Welcome to the second part of the 5th of November uh, teachings on a blueprint day. It's the last blueprint day we carry on this week. We go back to normal from tomorrow. And there's, there's any evolution or changes or new data during the week, we'll come back to show or whatever, depending on who manufactures, finishes their unit. <clears throat> As I said this morning, please, <coughs> you start receiving your unit. Some should have done by now. And some will, in the course of next week, next 10 days, you start seeing these blue units in front of your door, in front of your house. First of all, let us know you received it. Secondly, let us know how it performs, what it needs to be changed, what you see that we learn from you. But please, again, I'll go back on it. If you have a washing machine, if you have a dishwasher, if you have a heating system, do not connect them directly into the line, at least for two or three weeks till the system settles in the whole structure of your house. We have put a non-disclosure on it, a non, what do you call it, uh, on your, uh, I'll, I'll become a panelist now. So, um, you have to uh, understand what you're doing and how you're using the system. Um, are there any questions before we go from this morning? Or are there any questions regarding construction of these systems you might have a problem with? Or have we solved the problem with the turn of the coils? Mr. Cash, John here yes. from Canada. I was Ooh. wondering, is the, John from Canada? Yes, sir. I was wondering if there's any reason why uh, the coils or the actual entire unit, uh, specifically the car unit, could not be encapsulated in an epoxy resin uh, to keep everything dry, everything <laughs> solid, so it doesn't shake or or get moisture in it. What do you mean by epoxy resin? Uh, well, fiberglass or a marine epoxy, um, there's a number of different types of epoxy resins. And I was just wondering if, if you knew of any <laughs> reason why uh, that would not, other than, than it would make it a monolithic block and you wouldn't be able to do anything with it afterwards. Uh, but is there well, any... Really, we never tried it. Um, if you look at the Amastos unit, the capacitor in there, uh, is being literally like proxies being embedded in a, a hot glue, a specific hot glue, <coughs> that it doesn't touch anything. But in the power units, we just use a frame with no uh, no cover. Okay, but it, it doesn't affect the capacitors at all. Pardon? It doesn't affect the the capacitors at all. Their function. Not really, you should not do, but it's uh, it's what was decided when they were building the, the blue units for the masters and uh, it's a yellowish, bluish type thing they put on. It's an industrial hot glue, not a standard hot glue you buy. Okay. And uh, it's, there is no need for it because you're dealing with the fields, you're not dealing with matter state. Well, in specifically with the car unit, you're also dealing with a tremendous amount of vibration and impact damage um, and moisture because the, the temperature inside the car is going to heat up and cool down. And the, way lots of problems is, way. <clears throat> the way it is, you've got to secure it to the body of the car somewhere. I presume the future units will be totally different. 
but uh, at the present unit, you have to secure the system somewhere in your in your car. Well, one thing we learned from the uh, uh, doing the co the battery coils, the little small coils on the batteries, is that uh, they have to be bulletproof. Otherwise, they come apart, they come off, um, they rattle and shake. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, uh, mechanical vibration going on even inside the cars. Yeah, the, the way these units are designed to stay inside the car, they are not. You take the wire to the to the engine to. Uh, to the what do you call it to portholes they are not designed to be in the what do you call it they're not designed to be inside the engine section of the car yeah okay thank you thank you very much any other question there was a picture sent to you from uh, the, the setting with the meters on it. Do you have that to show, Vince? From the Chinese um, earlier today? No, there was another one from Bora. Aruba. Aruba. Any other name you want to tell me? Aruba. This is the one with the meters. No, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, okay. What is Aruba? What is Aruba, Rick? Jamaica. Pardon? Jamaica. Jamaica. It's in Caribbean. Aruba's oh, in the Caribbean, Mr. Cash. It's not Jamaica. It is a... It is a, a country that is a colony of the Netherlands, which I'm pretty sure they want back too. What is it? It's in it's in the Caribbean. It's very close to uh, Curacao. Uh, they're they're a chain of those islands in the Caribbean that created that country. Yeah, they're all in the same vicinity down there in the Caribbean. Uh, so we got to such a small island. And a man in Ireland could understand and had replicated. So our wish is complete. We are all intelligent enough to do it. Aruba is close to South America. It's on the southern end of the Caribbean. Okay. Have we managed to find a picture, Vince? <coughs> They say time is gold and we don't have to share it. It doesn't exist. Yeah, it's good to know. Have we managed to find Richard? Or what happened to Sandro's unit? Or what happened to the one in, uh, in uh, what do you call it, in Switzerland? I'm Shondor. Uh, I was very busy with other administrative tasks, so I didn't progress much. I made the coil and uh, I will put them uh, maybe tonight uh, to nano coating, so it will take some Is time. Is your system working? Not yet. I it will take some... about two weeks. It will take... Lunch is coming back. Giovanni, uh, uh, pictures are with Caroline. I don't know. Marco is waiting for it. Uh, Giovanni, you have to ask. Tell him it's lost. It never arrived the other one. They have to produce another one. They, they have to produce one. We never received it. For the conference, ah, yes. tell him we never received it. It was just being given a number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. Okay, so we don't know. Is the German online? He can tell us. The numbers. I'm getting. Mm -hmm. It's can a beautiful take a stack.
Yes, this is Firuze from Florida in the US. I was just wondering if Mr. Kesh would kindly uh, elaborate very briefly uh, whether we can uh, mix uh, the Ormus or the seawater with caustic with copper GANS to fortify the GANS. I don't know what the Ormus is. Go and find out what it is. About the GANS, you can mix the GANS with any water. Well, I've asked this question many times and they've been telling me that when you mix seawater and caustic, it's called Ormus. So I, I was under the impression that you could make GANS from seawater and caustic. You can, you can make a GANS out of, with, with seawater, not out of seawater. You have to understand what you call a seawater is mixture of every element on this planet. When you speak about the seawater and you add a caustic to it, it creates a kind of gans from the atomic uh, elements which are in it. If you create a high heat and you get this water from the sea, you, to you is clear water, but as I've said before, there is more atomic structure, molecular structure of like gold, platinum and everything else in the seawater. You don't see it, but it's part of it. So when you add the hot caustic to it, if there are any of these elements, you create a nano and then immediately because of the presence of salt, a uh, gans of the material. You got to, and if you understand it logically, can we have our board back please? <clears throat> it's, you have to, it's a natural process, we all know, when you have the rivers across the countries, you have all the rain or whatever, they wash every mineral on this planet into the ocean. If they come from Africa, they bring different minerals. If they come from Asia, different minerals. And our waters travel around this planet. So our waters are one of the richest resources of minerals man ever known. But because we don't have the technology how to extract it, we don't see it. So when you add hostic, uh, hot caustic to the seawater, those elements, it's exactly like what you do with your copper plate. With your copper plate, you add uh, the um, caustic, and what you do, you nano size. In, uh, in the sea, the nano particles are already inside. All you do, you just automatically bring GANS. What you see at the bottom <coughs> is the GANS of the nanoparticles, or before that, atomic molecular structure of the metals and the elements which are floating in the water. It should not be a surprise. So you automatically achieve GANS if you do it, and you don't make GANS of every element because some of these elements melting point, even at atomic structure, molecular structure, is much higher than what the caustic can create. So this question in case I'm getting asked, yes, you produce cans from the materials which are floating. To you, you can't see, but when it is, let me explain, I was explaining this to my son. Maybe it's applicable to a lot of you to understand. And I've discussed this before. This is the way we teach the children, but it makes a lot of sense for the adults. You have a copper wire. You have a copper wire. You put in a caustic, you create what I call doesn't want to do. I can do a different way with it. 
<coughs> you put it in the water, in the caustic, and you get the nanomaterial. So now you go from molecular structure into what we call atomic structure. What do you get? This is the molecular structure. You go to atomic structure. And then what happens? This is in presence of caustic. When you have the water, then the story chain is totally different. Because now all you do is, you know, you, you all done this. You go to this thing doesn't want to come up. What do you do when you were a child? You were given a bunch of corn and you put it in a hot pan and you waited till the right hit comes across and then what happened? Your popcorn pops. This is what happens when a nanomaterial becomes That's all it is. Every single one of these pops up. That's all it is. The salt gravitational magnetic field strength of sodium in the presence of oxygen and water as a catalyst changes every single one of these things to a cell. That's all it is. So salt is a popcorn machine. Sea salt, salt water, where you put things in it, is a popcorn machine, if it's easy to understand. So a little atom in an atomic structure is such a tiny hole. And then in the, in the plasmatic condition, you see the size. And that's, about the, that's all it is. There, you created matter heat condition. Here, you create plasma strength condition. You create a condition that it allows it to pop. So, if you're in the seawater, and in the seawater, you have such a human, huge amount of nanomaterials in a already, uh, in a, what do you call it, in the Gans state. In a even nano state floating, you don't see it because in that state is 10 to the minus 9. I, I talked about this before. If it's 10 to the power, I'm getting, I think we lost the centralization on this. Uh, so, what happened? One of these is 10 to the power of minus 9. One dot. You don't see it. Our eyes are not specialized. But when it pops, you physically see it. It comes anything in the region of 10 to the minus 4, 10 to the minus 5, and we can see it. Because now the gravitational field of the plasma in respect to its environment is dictating the size. So, when I've seen this, everybody talks about, uh, do we create cans of material when we take seawater? Start becoming understanding the whole process. The rains wash across all the lands, and the rains washing the lands, they carry plutonium, uranium, gold, everything else, get washed into the sea, and in rolling and reaching the sea, they become in this atomic, structure, molecular structure, but very small, and they float. <clears throat> if you have huge amount of iron, and you have a condition where the Gans state can be made of the protein, which happens, now we can see it physically can be videoed in the North China, and then in touch with the atomic iron of the land, I've said this before, it becomes literally 
like a, a single structure, and then they wash into the North Japanese Sea, and then they become food fish. The first stage of omelets. We could not understand, I explain this in other teaching, how so much life and so much fish comes from that part of the world into the oceans of the north of Japan. Now, the scientists understand the protein stays with the snow over the winter on the metal and iron, dust of iron, which is atomic. And then it gets washed in during the spring and it starts a hemoglobin structure and then the protein and the single cell animals start growing from it. So now we see the process, we understand the process. But when you take iron, as I always say, they say, in every man's body, there is equal to one nail of iron. If I put that nail of iron, it's nothing. But if I manage to bring it in a ganser state of the body of the man, then you see the difference. Here, if there's one atom there, now is one atom there. This is atomic structure, this is atomic ganser structure. That's why it floats across your body. If I make every single atom of your body in a matter state, most probably that's what we get in the cascade after they burn us. We become a handful of dust. That's what it is when you're in a nans or in a gans state, you're a human sized body. When you convert it into the nanomaterial, when you burn it like carbon become, you become the size of a dust of, what do you call it, a literally a handful of ashes. The ashes are your body in nano state. You put it in the salt of the, the body of the man, in the liquid of the water, it grows like a popcorn to the size of a man. In burning, we evaporate the water. What we're going to get is that little pot which people throw over the grounds or whatever they do with it. So you see the difference. Now you understand the technology, you understand the reality and the truth about life. That's how we become. When you're heated in a certain way, matter state, when you go from the gans to the matter, you become this. When you go in a plasmatic state, you get the strength, you go to that. So we build up. When they take the energy from us, we go back to not handful of more than handful of dust. If, now that you understand, you get the ashes of a man and add it to the salt water and see how the man will come out of it. Will it become a popcorn of a man, but with no organs? Or would we, if we add 12 different salts of the body of the man in the pot, would be popcorn back to liver, kidney, and everything else, but all jumbled up on top of each other. This is <coughs> the reality about existence. Depends on what state you want to appear. And every time I've seen this question, you get almost, you get this, you get gans. Gans is the state of the conversion of the plasma from nano state to the plasma state. And if you never understood it, maybe this gives you a very good idea what we're talking about. It's a plasma, it behaves like a plasma. And if you add energy to it or take energy in the matter state from it, then it becomes nanomaterial. Then you're not more than a few bunches of dust. When you look at yourself, this is the gans of the matters which has constructed your body. Even the liquid water which you carry is in the gans state. And when they put you in a little pot, and they give it to your family, you're not more than a few bit of ashes. So you should understand this simple position.
when you see the nano layer is nothing, but when you take the nano layers to float, then it become like a big popcorn or whatever you made against. So this is the structure you have to watch. And then it becomes very easy when you want to go into the tangible food to eat, tangible material, you come from, uh, you will come from the energy, gravitational magnetic field. Your first port of conversion will be in a GANS. And then from the GANS, you go into a nano. And from the nano, you go into the matter state. The same way as we went the reverse. We went from molecular structure to nano, from nano to GANS, and from GANS to energy. <coughs> so in a space, you don't have the matter. But if you like to have, let's say, a piece of copper to show to somebody in planet Zeus what copper looks like on Earth, you have this gravitational magnetic field. All you do, you create this GANS, you create this nanostructure, and then you show them in a molecular structure. Very simple. So it's part of the process you have to learn. The process, the only difference is what media you use gives you the appearance. You use the media of the salt of the body of a man, it gives you in a specific salt the liver structure. In another media, it gives you the brain. In another media, salt of strength, it gives you a kidney. The 12 salts and the mixture of the combination of the 12 salts of the body of the man, when they speak about, it creates different conditions for production of different materials. If you take the salt, which is needed for, let's say, creation of liver, and you can create it in the brain, you get a brain, and you get the liver in the brain. It's the salt which creates the condition of the manifestation in conjunction with the current, the blood, and the lymph. The salt, the liquid body of the man, creates the environment. You've all been drinking salt water all your life. Every day you cook, you put salt in it. How come you don't all pop? When you create the right salt, the right combination, the right energy, the right emotion, then you create a cell. And if you understand all this, one of the things which you said, you can now go fingers and toes and everything else. What happened now, you can replicate the salt of it and you can create the right current for the production of each cell. Then you can grow fingers in one day, in one hour. So that's what a man's knowledge to extend. When you see things from now on, understand the process. We started. Man for past centuries has been used to this. And it's so good because we feel it, we have trusted it. Now we've gone in a very short time to this and a shorter than that to this and even shorter than that to this. This to this is taken millions of years. This to this is taking us less than six months. This to this, it took us less than two months, three months, and now you're straight into plasma. You lot, have traveled what the man has traveled over millions of years in less than one year in knowledge. That's why a lot of you can't accept it because now is against what you've learned all your life and your ancestors. The evolution of the science had to be in one go, otherwise it would have been chaos to get you into a space. Now that you learn from the top and now you understand the bottom because you lived with it, we took you from this to nano, the way we made it, for five years, six years was on the internet. From that to plasma, a lot of people have a problem in the past two, three months with that. And not only that plasma, now you're going into what we call a total plasma without physicality of the guns. So if one day you sit down in a few years, next years, and think it took your grandfather to see the car change from the donkey, the first cars, last century, and then we went from little cars, as Mr. Ford said, you can have it in any color, as long as it's black, because we couldn't make any other paint color than black. And then we came to the fast cars, four wheel drives, and the jets and the rest of it. In two generations, man went from donkey 
to John Budget and Space. 1844 is the first time Bell ever spoke on the line. We are in 2014, 15, 170 years, two generations, three generations, we have changed the course. And now you poor chaps, I feel sorry for you, you've gone from this to this in less than a year. It's the same process. We use donkeys and hay, and now we use jet fuel, and the ones who are thinking very advanced, they talk about chemtrails. Have you heard about this? This is very dangerous. Now, if you have such a problem, you poor chaps, look where you're gonna go. In less than one year, in less than six months, whatever new, the carpet is taken under your feet. You were happy with copper, you were happy with oil, you were happy with mm, debating about nuclear. You passed the nuclear, you went into plasma, you go into the guns, and now you're talking about the free plasma. Anybody, if somebody went to coma two years ago and wake up now, it calls you lunatics. Here, if the guy would have gone to coma 170 years ago, with the donkeys, you would have woken up now, it would have been sending you a lunatic. Your lot, in less than 12 months, have joined this total lunatic asylum. That's why there is a lot of opposition, because we don't want to go through the change. But it's there, you make the power unit, you see it, you take the next step. But understand why you put caustic in the seawater, you get another material, in having nanomaterial, you put it in the salt water of the sea because it's already caustic on the salt, the two together, you get the gans. It's the process, it's so rapid that you go to nano and then now the salt water has cooled down from the heat, behaves like a salt, immediately gives you the nano state. But you gotta understand because of the huge number of particles in the water, they connect and they create miniature nano nano voltages which allows them to <coughs> <coughs> the creation of the guns so would there be uh, another protocol for the gans that you make from seawater that we might learn later i think the confusion was that when richard made uh, seawater and caustic, uh, a lot of us that are new to the teaching thought, okay, this is great GANS, but um, would there be a future protocol for the GANS that you make from seawater? I mean, I understand what you're saying now, <clears throat> that yeah, it could be dangerous. If you understand the principle, you, you don't need a protocol. What is the protocol? This is a protocol of life on this planet. This is how life has started from this planet. When the gases of this planet in the nanostructure interacted with the metals in the nanostructure and both in the presence of the salt converted into a gas, it became human life. It became life as we know it. Did God write a poor protocol? It's a natural process. We now we have managed to open the total understanding is as simple as this. There's no complication to it. It's, uh, it's your life, your own voice is the confirmation of existence that some of these nanomaterials manage to find a way that they interact with each other in a gas and in plasma, that the vibration of the field becomes your voice. And we have managed to control it. If you even listen to your voice, where does it come from? From interaction of different ganses in vibration in respect to each other in different strength. Because there's a huge problem. I was trying to explain yesterday, and I explain it again. If you are new people around the foundation, maybe it's strange to you. When we put the nanomaterials in the containers, and we rotated them, these nanomaterials themselves created fields. If you look at it, they created the fields around them. Let's just 
expand it, then people understand it more. These fields were huge. In a way, if you look at it, they were like this. Each one for itself. And then when these fields started interacting, this was, was just with themselves. In the interaction between here, they created a free field from their interactions. So what happened to you is, if you look at it, the interaction of the fields gives you a new residual because this one interacts with this. If I can change this in a different way, maybe you understand better. Let's rub this off and use different colors for you to understand. If I use this one, and we go from the bottom. If you don't see it, you tell me. This is one plasma. This is the reactor. This is the reactor which you built. If you've seen them on the foundation website, we made three reactors. We put them what we call in the star formation. This one has a different material. It made its own fields. This one had a different material. It made its own fields. This one is a different material. It made its own field. We have a four reactor, which is somewhere here. This one created its own field in a different color. I'll go for purple. But these are gravitational magnetical fields. So what they do, they expand upwards. They expand in a way that they go out in every direction. They expand. Sorry, we go this way. And you have the same with here. The whole reactors, fields, magnetic fields interaction carries on expanding in all directions. So what you get from the interaction of the three magnetic fields is the magnetic field, which is somewhere here. From the interaction of these three, you get the field which is here. I'm gonna go a darker color if I can get hold of that you can see, you get from these three, you get this center. From these two, you still get a field here. From these two, you get a field here. From these two, you get a field here. From these three, you get one center here, but don't forget it's a three dimensional. So you end up with a field free zone, which is from the interaction of all these reactors this one here and the fields. So what you have created from the matter state confining a GANS, you created a new field, which is this one here. And then from interaction of these fields with the field of this one, with the interaction of there, you created out of interaction of fields, you created a new field. If you look at it, if you make this one oxygen, 16, carbon, 14, and nit no, carbon, sorry, nitrogen, 14, and carbon, 12, and then you put this as hydrogen, 1, 
and you understand gravitational magnetic field movement, the strongest to the weakest motion, you have created a plasmatic flow in this circle here. And then at the same time, magnetic flow between the strongest and the weakest. And then what has happened? You see the creation of life through the balance interaction near enough and what you call a plasmatic field force here and in the interaction, a plasmatic field force between the top, which leads with non dimension. So these are the physical entities. And then from the interaction, you got the essence of the man, which is his emotion. And from interaction of the essences, you created the soul of the man. Where this here is the emotion, understanding of creation out of physicality. So, in essence, you have in your structure the essence of everything. And then this is only one amino acid. When you add this, the soul of this little amino acid with his emotion, which is here, stack them up, billions of them. And then you decide according to the strength of the set, you get emotion of the mind. That's all it is. Because every single cell in your body has contributed to the totality of the emotion of this. And then when the total emotion has interacted, itself leads to the creation of the soul. This is created from the matter state. This is created from interaction of the field state. And then, now, you had a cell which had its own soul and its own emotion. Now, you add it to a, what you call, you would like to call it a human being. I'll give you an arm and a leg. And then, if you look, one cell is somewhere here. Let's make it very nice. This is one cell here. Now, this cell, emotion and its soul, totality creates emotional part and the soul. Now, this man itself stands on another structure. You call it the earth. Now, this man is the cell. Now, you have all the creatures of this planet exactly like this, which then, in their interaction, create the soul of the planet. And then the same state carries on to the soul of the solar system, because you're part of the same dynamic, and then you end up with the soul of the galaxy, with the soul of the universe, and then the soul of the creator, which all your dots put together make the total structure. So, if you look at it, I made man in the image of myself, where the true image started from there. And if you look at it, ended up in the self. And then, if you go even further than this, the plasma of the cell itself has the soul of itself, which is this soul, which is connected back to your biggest nightmare. If you look at it, it goes all the way back. the soul of the creator. It's one loop. It's one cycle. And it revolves on the same way. 
This is what I keep on telling you. When you go into the plasma technology, when you go into understanding of the fields of creation, theology is part of it, because if you understand it, you understand ethics is part of the conduct of the plasma. Because if it damages itself here, it damages itself there. A fool shoots herself in the foot, as I always say, and goes for a marathon to win a gold medal. It's an impossibility. So, if you understand this, you understand how simply you are just, a, as it's in my last book, or one of the books, God is creator and man only a converter. We convert energies. We don't add anything, we don't take anything, because the giving of the beginning is given by the Creator. So, when you look at it, if you want to look at it in a human way, if this is the Creator, as a human body of a man, <clears throat> the man is a cell in a cell in a cell of a cell of maybe on the toe of the Creator. So, I made man in the image of myself because you are part of the Creator. And as I keep on telling you, that goes the work of the Prophet of God. I work in one dimension. In the shape of the plasma, the structure of the field. <coughs> so, how you do it, how you convert it, here the conversion was salt. Here, the conversion is energy transfer of the matter. Here is the interaction of the fields and then the same dimension of you. So now you see why you're all part of the creator, because you could be in this top. Because as a lot, as a totality, somewhere down here is the soul of this solar system. So simple. Well, that's why I love your work because it's so parallel with uh, spiritual teachings because we all come from the one. Um, it's beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. No, not at all. I mean, I think for those that are... The problem is, we as human beings in the body of a man try to make a special case of ourselves to confirm our existence. If you understand that we are totality as a total part of a bigger, beautiful thing, individuality does not matter. And this is where the problem is with the human being. We are the weakest, we call ourselves the king of animals, and we are the most ungrateful people for our work. And then to cover it up, we call ourselves king, because that way we cover our shortcomings. <coughs> Any other question? So Mr. Kes, just to finish it off, and never come back to this subject again, yeah, because there are many, many people asking about uh, the salt water. Why did Richard make it? Because there's the video and everyone's been going, watching it. That's where the confusion is. Why did he- There is no confusion. Richard's extends challenges the knowledge of the man. Okay. This is, there is no, you want to make it, the people are making confusion because then through confusion, they can make a comment to confirm their own existence. No, this that is, wasn't my intention. Pardon? I said that was not my intention. I just started uh, no, following your teaching. About you. Oh, no, I understand. Yes. yes, thank you. In general, this is what happened. Uh, Richard is, uh, I love the way he works, as you know. Whenever we have an opening or something, Richard turns up here with, uh, what do you call it, Kevin Davina, the, the camera crew, we call them. And I know the person and I know his emotion. So he has a way and he's a Dutchman. As we say, 
he thinks in a different way than we do. He, he is a very logical, but his logic is the way he, <coughs> I call it the policeman logic, because he's a policeman. Yeah? He has to have an answer, and what's the reason? What was the reason for the crime? So he tries to find out, and it is a very nice thing to put the way he puts it. <coughs> and this is the way it has to be. People challenge, people try to understand. The problem comes when people try to sidetrack people for their own meager existence. We've seen this with the people who bring arms and then arms is a gas. If arms is a gas, why does the arms become a gas in the water? The hypocrisy with this thing, which started with one, what I call, meager minded man with the institute when he was here, it still carries on. And he's the only one who's pushing it because, and everybody falling with it. He has no intelligence of understanding. And with this way, he tries to confirm his existence. Side tracking people from Oms into the Gans and the Gans to Oms and change everything. And then when we put it to him past two days, oh, this is what for people to understand. If you know you're fooling people, why do you fool people? So you're a criminal by act. And this is why he left the Institute. The understanding is the same. You see the meter, and immediately the meter is not working because something else. This man has a reverse negative psychology. You put the meter 129, there's something with the meter, because otherwise we send a meter for checking. And the came meter is correct. And now another meter. He, confirmed, he, does, he has no intelligence of science. And his way he stands, he shows it. That's why they don't stay around. So, if it's Oms, play with Oms. If you play with the Gans, how can Oms assist the Gans and the Gans and the Oms is the same, according to the same people. Gans is the state of the nano state of the matter when literally behaves as a plasma of itself. It's very important uh, you understand the difference. You understand the position. If you play, you have to play. You play with a state of what we call, let's say, a galaxy. You understand the condition of how a galaxy is created in that environment. You play with Gans, you play how Gans is created in this environment. How you interact, you go according to two things. Learn something maybe as part of the teaching. I've been through this, I go through it again. Matter has its own gravitational magnetic field strength and its condition of the matter is according to the environment of the stronger gravitational magnetic field which controls it. If you understand this, then just change the name. Change the matter into the solar system. And then the solar system is dictated by the galaxy. Change the name again, the galaxy, then you're controlled by what you call the, if I can write it here, the universal pressure. So the smallest on its own, in this environment of the dictated environment, behaves in its own matter state. And then the, the one which superimposes conditions is field forces on how what is subordinate can behave. And then that subordinate is for himself what it does. I explained this to a child very recently. It's like you are all Americans, you live in the state of in the United States, then you live in one state, then you become the state of California, and then within the state of California, you become the Spanish group. You're still part of the same structure. It's this which allows you to behave the way the Spanish do in Spain or in Latin America, which is come. It hasn't changed anything. We have conditioned ourselves to accept we live by the law of the United States 
and then believe by the law of not the United States, inside the United States, believe by the law of California, and then by the law of the California, believe with the Spanish conditions. Put the same. This is the matter of state condition, and every state lives within the structure of state. And then you put the United States in the global structure of the whole planet. So maybe this explains to you what is the difference between the matter. We all condition ourselves. It's the same with the matter state. Here is psychological, economical. Here is gravitational, magnetical field strength internally or gravitational magnetic field externally enforcing its condition how the internally it can behave. If we change the gravitational magnetic field of the sun, the earth will be different, the plasma of the solar system different. Most of it, we all need a very thick skin and a thermal system with 20 legs because it will be too cold or it'll be too warm or we need to run faster. If you look, the condition of the solar system in how Earth, I've explained this before, uh, has enforced us to be, the sun was here billions of kilometers away. The Earth started as a dust on the edges of the solar system. As the dust increased in mass and it got pulled by the gravitational field of the master, it attracted more and more and became a bigger entity. And now this is where we are, for example, as Earth. Sooner or later, the gravitational pull, if we last that long, will pull us in. But when we were here, because the field pressures of the gravitational magnetic field of the sun was too far, it allowed a looser structure, creation of dinosaurs. You cannot have dinosaurs where Earth is now. Because now we are closer, the gravitational field pull is much stronger, so it does not allow existence of big animals. The pressure is closing. So the biggest we see is elephant. If and when the Earth moves somewhere here, for example, maybe the biggest size animal we can see on this planet is a mouse. Because external pressure dictates what internally, even the Earth being independent, what it can do and how matter can appear. And when we get very close to the sun, we most probably, due to the heat and change, there is no life on the surface. And the entities which live with us within the center will live their lives because they are not affected because the shell of this planet has covered them fully and they still are in that shell, outside temperature. So life on the surface finishes, but life internally never ends till the point when it melts and it goes inside. It is what I was explaining to the, the Romanian professor yesterday when he was with us. If you look at it, it's very simple. It's like drops of rain. It evaporates, it goes, and it comes back in. When you have the earth, water evaporates, solidifies, and rays back down. And this is exactly the same structure as the solar system. We are nothing but the dust of rain which is falling back into the mother's lap. But this cycle takes millions of years and this cycle takes maybe a few hours. There is no difference. It's just a bigger scale. Yes, I'm not going to give you mine. It takes too long to come out. Great. Yes, you agree. Okay, but if if I increase the strength uh, of which one? Of one entity. Which um, entity? 
the earth in this case. Okay, you can't do it because it's already preset when it was created. So I just increase the mass, not the strength. You can you increase the mass from what you absorb from the fields which your gravitational magnetic field center has a matching of. Yeah. Yeah? So your mass increases. It's like very much like a hailstone. As you gather more and more, the bigger you become. Here, in most of the gaseous planets, the center is very small. As you come through, the mass increases because you lose the gases and convert you up to more of the masses, heavy masses. Because have you ever been to a factory where they <coughs> produce feather? Have you? When you go to the dock factory, when they get feathers, chicken feathers, do you know how they separate the finest feather from the rough one? It's a very simple system. It's a very old system. It's usually a building like this, and then you have divisions. And then all the feathers come here with a huge blower. The smallest one, which is the best quality, lands there. The heavy one, the minute they come, go, they go in here. So, if you understand this, reverse it in the structure of the solar system, then you see how planetary system is created. <coughs> I was I was thinking about the popcorn you speak yeah, before. You must be hungry. Uh, so when when I pop, when you pop, yeah, when they they become bigger, I increase the distance between one and the other. No. In that case, you don't increase, you create a bigger magnetical field in respect to your gravitation. This is something you haven't understood, so let's explain it. It's a good question to answer with you this way. In a matter state, you have a stronger gravitational in respect to your environment. In a gas state, you have a stronger magnetical which allows you to open up. You understand? So the magnetical is not that strong compared to because the environment takes most of the pressure. The environment of the salt, when you create, it creates a gravitational magnetic field which taps into your gravitational field, not into your magnetical. So magnetical can expand open and then you get the expansion. The only thing happens in the whole process of the creation is which one is playing in respect to which one of itself. If you look at it, if I can get it near enough, even though this is a structure, when you put it in the water, then the magnetic field and gravitational field of if I can go here, a field of this one, if you look, take dictates what happens in the matter state. Because this links with this, because of, look at the structure of, um, sorry about this, look at the structure of water and the salt. That's sodium, both caustic and the water, salt in the water, have a common denominator, sodium. Here you have a chlor, here caustic has an O and a H, and strange enough, then you have H2O. You see how the connection comes? and the balance of the gravitational magnetic field plays, you put anything here, copper, in a Gantz state, then you see how much the plasma will open up. You can predetermine the size of the Gantz by looking at the strength and the gravitational magnetic field of the matter itself.
you use caustic, which is NaOH, to create the separation. And then you again use another separation using uh, what they call the salt, which is sodium again. So you open it, now you open it further to the point that it releases itself. It becomes a gas, it becomes an independent plasma. You understand? So if you look at it, the common denominator in the both processes was salt, sodium. It was the adding of the caustic, which is NaOH, which created the original separation from the matter into a gas. And then you emphasize the existence of the same strength, because now you found the weakness, it's like a boxer, you punch it again with the same strength, because now you manage to split it, now you can totally open it up. So we seen this, to develop this, it took me 20 years. And then I went around the shops, finding another level to it to increase the process faster. And the only way you can process faster to create that energy that this release separation of the atomic structure comes is with potassium. Because part of the potassium you buy carries a potassium 40 and it's a radioactive material conjunction in some of the elements. So it's the same process as what you take B12 in the body of the man. I watched a lot of parallel systems, very parallel, to find parallels and how they go. I spent hours, I went to a factory in Belgium, finding where they put potassium in their caustic to speed up the rate of the separation, because it's the same as you take B12. So you understand, you found the common denominator. The original separation came when I put the caustic into the metal. Now, if that could do the separation, now I wanted further separation. What was the next step to create a better separation to reach an independence? So it had to have another sodium in it. And what's the best natural sodium is sodium chloride, which is salt. So it came, you weaken it, you separate it. So you got to understand the plasma interaction. And then you see how easy it can be manipulated. And then what you get, let me explain to you before you ask me another question. You had the copper, yeah? And if you see what is free here in the mass. You have a, always a free oxygen somewhere. That's why you get copper oxide. If you can go to a very fast process, <coughs> you separate this and you use both of these oxygens. Then you get CO2. Most of the, uh, the process, when it happens in the nature, the calcium is all sorry, the sodium is always constant. And then because of the structure of this planet, you get this calcium or sodium or potassium available. Then in some of your systems, you see Ca, CO3, or you get a Ca, CuO23. Then it's all to do with the gravitational magnetic field of sodium. You look at it as the atomic structure, I look at it as a field structure. Because in reality, sodium is a matter state, but if you look at it in the Mr. Cohen, which is a protein, the highest is 16. If you take the sodium, what is sodium? What's the atomic mass of sodium? 22, 16. <coughs> <coughs> Work on the basis of up to 30% 
in the atomic mass difference between atomic gravitational field strength. This is already in the state of Gans, 16. And then now you see how sodium is part of the structure of life on this planet. Because in a gas state gravitational magnetic field, sodium in that state due not to the atomic mass, but the gravitational mass, magnetic mass, it becomes like 16, it becomes like oxygen. And it finds the matching with the salt leads to creation of life. And then you have the same thing coming with 56 or you have with 40. And then this decides if this becomes a, what we call horizontal people or this becomes with magnesium 42, 44, uh, what do you call it? Vertical people. When you go into the structure, you don't look at the atomic mass, you look at the gravitational magnetic field strength mass, which is totally plasmatic mass, it's different than atomic mass. A plasmatic mass in the environment of the equal sodium on Earth allows the performance and the operation of the uh, amino acid. In time, as now we speak about the plasma, we open the plasma, you got to look at the plasmatic, not in an atomic nuclear structure. And the question? Another question. You haven't paid enough. Two questions is enough. Okay, I, pa I pass to another. No, no, come on, carry on. <laughs> okay, I read another ar article. I don't know if it's correct or not. I'm asking you that the moon uh, is going far away from the Earth a yeah. couple of millimeters every year. I don't know. We've got to ask the Americans who left their machine on the moon uh, and imagine. they send the man. You know how they measure it? No, I don't know. The, we say man never been to the moon, but they say they've been to the moon. And then what they do, the Americans, this is a job a man is doing every day of his life. At a certain hour, he goes up the mountain and he sends, he looks and sends a beam to a system which they say the Americans have left on the moon. He sends a ray and measures the time of return. Okay. This is how it's, it's very accurate. The two questions, did man ever go on the moon? And if he's never been on the moon, how did he leave that other tool there? And what does this man do every day measuring it? And this man who measures it every day, this, I've, I've, I've seen the guy, and this is not a joke, this is reality. The guy goes every day, systematically, sends a beam to the moon, and they say the rest of the reflector, it comes back and is measuring it. And his measurement is a cornerstone of all this calculation. But there are two questions we've got to answer. Did the man been to the moon? And if they've been to the moon, why did they not show us the footstep of Armstrong? But if they can show us, they can't show us the little. If they can find that little spot on the moon and shine on it, is it true or not? How can a little man on Earth send a beam to the moon to the same spot and get the reflection back and measure it and say we are moving two millimeters away every year? And if the speed, we can find that little tiny spot and beam on it. Why can't we beam the Scotty and see the footstep of Armstrong? There is a debate on that. Is it true? As I, as I was questioning myself, that if the Earth is getting bigger and the same process is on the moon, so if the both entities are growing in some way, so to maintain the balance, maybe they... Earth, gravitational magnetic field, in so many ways, the state's constant. As I just explained in respect to the plasma today, if this is the Earth, and this is our central line, or central core, the gravitational magnetic field of the Sun, Earth, hardly can change. But as we are going further into this plasma of the solar system, we are absorbing more material. Our gravitational field 
hardly changes the state's gravitational magnitude. Due to the amount of the mass we are absorbing, we continuously add inertia. Is the inertia which is increasing. Because when you become a matter, you don't have gravitational magnetic field strength, and you have a gravitational magnetic field of a matter state, which is inertia. So as we are going further, our total mass gravitational field increases due to the uh, inertia of the material we are collecting. But on the other hand, we are losing some of our energy, gravitational magnetic field, due to the losses in the environment of this plasma. But we're receiving more than we lose, so in mass we're expanding, and that's where most of the dust comes from. The conformation of the increase on the layer of the Earth is very easy. If you, I've said this before, if you live in a desert part of the world, where it rains once a year, when you know it rains, just collect all the rainwater which comes from your roof and then put a magnet in it and see what comes with it. You find a lot of meteorite, magnetic meteorite. All these little bits, in millions of tons, continuously adds to the mass of this planet. So our mass is continuously increasing with the dust which coming in on us. So the layer is increasing. We don't see it, we are not used to it, but it doesn't go anywhere, so it stays in and layer by layer built up. It's a huge amount, tons and tons every day lands on this planet. If you've been to Africa, West Africa, West Africa, somewhere in the desert, every time, it's around this time, if I remember correctly, you start getting red sandstorms. It comes from Central Africa. It flows in a way over like Gambia and that kind. You come out, everything is red. It's a specific red. And usually happens a few times a year when the sandstorm comes. And the next border is the Atlantic Ocean. Without this red sand, there is no life in the Atlantic Ocean. This red sand brings with itself new life, which become fertilizer for new life in the ocean when they convert into gas and to new light. It's hundreds of thousands of tons every year, but the storm which comes from Central Africa through over passes, if you've been to Gambia, because I used to work there, we used to get it, it's impossible to go up. And then when it rains with it, it's worse. You rain red. And then, you, it's a specific red color of the, of the sand of the desert. And then you say it's horrible, but if you understand without this, all this nourishment of uh, minerals, which does not come into Atlantic Ocean, life is impossibility. And this huge mass which lands in Atlantic Ocean, creates a specific current to create life. It's the initiator of the hurricanes which we get back in uh, east of the United States every year. They're all connected to each other. So with life, with those what I explained, miniature atomic energies which is released in the structure, uh, if I go backwards, these, uh, these miniature energies which are released to create life, uh, they send they start life in, what do you call it, in the oceans, in the Atlantic Ocean. And then these, because of they carry some copper, they carry some iron, because of the redness of it, you see it. Then with the salt and what it comes on the surface of the ocean, which is a protein, we've shown the protein is, doesn't come from dinosaurs, it comes from natural process of the earth, leads to the creation of the first life. It creates a motion in the current of the plasma, which leads to the heat transfer, part of the heat transfer and creation of life, and impartially is the part of the process of the hurricane in the West Coast of the United States.
is all connected to each other. Without the sandstorm, there is no life. And when the life takes place, it becomes to change with the amino acid which comes into the surface of the salt of the sea, converts into life, becomes beginning of what they call amoebs and the rest of the first life in the sea, and then it creates a rotation, heat transfer, current transfer, and then this leads to everything else. You got to understand now that you speak about the plasma, totality of the knowledge, not fingerprints, what it can suit you. Next question. Hi, Mr. Cash, this is Thomas from Vienna. Yes. Um, I just want, I would just want to hear your feedback on my view, how I, I see it right now, or I able, am able to see it. If the creator is moving towards us, or we get attracted to him, or it's just a perspective side of you, if we get get together, like back to the source, if you want to call it like this, is it even possible that next to this creator, which we are in a in some way or some type, is there any other vibration or frequency which is separated from the creator itself? First of all, frequency and vibration is the force of matter and speed. Okay. So what is your next question? Or what can you repeat your question, then I'll put it to you in a different way. Okay, well, since since you described we are like all one, like we are all the creation, the creator itself, or, or expression of the creator, or the frequency of plasma, whatever you want to call it, um, is there any other entity, frequency, another creator type, which is like the other part of the duality system, like a dark force? I don't want to call it like this because it's it's a perspective view. But is there something else than the creator? And if yes, it is like the counterpart. Um, I'll answer this very recently. I think one of the knowledge seekers can answer you. You want to answer? Would you want to go? If he goes wrong, I'll try to correct him. <laughs> this term, next term, the same. Okay, uh, I will try. Who am I talking to? <laughs> uh, I'm Andrea. Andrea. Ah, hi there. Italian, Spanish, Spanish, Italian knowledge seeker. Vienna so, calling. <laughs> I, I I made the same question in some way. I, I questioned Mr. Cash. I, I asked Mr. Cash if um, how, how can I understand if there is which part is the dark, which side is the dark, and how can I tune to the light in some way? And he his answer was, um, if I remember well. He answering me, uh, have you ever think if he, inside you is the dark side, <laughs> if you are the dark side, if people are the dark side, if there is no one entity and maybe the entity is inside you in some way. <coughs> is it correct, Mr. Cash? I'll explain it to you in a further way because his question is slightly different. Let me explain to you, as I go back to that toe and the body, if I can find the toe, maybe we go back a page. Whenever this camera sees. This is you or this is humanity on the toe of the creator, let's say. A cell on the toe of the creator. The same way as you had the emotion and the soul, does the emotion of the creator affect you or does the soul of the creator affect you? Both of it. Yes, but there is a question. What is the balance with the soul of the creator? Is the soul of the creator the balance of itself? Or does the creator have a counterpart? 
Well, it's like the yeah, it's like the left brain and the right brain or heart and. Oh, it's like Adam and Eve. He made it out of his own to confirm his own existence, so they could see it to admire its beauty. If okay. you if you don't have a counterpart, if you don't have another piece that you can see, how do you appreciate that you exist? Very difficult. A lot of women find resonance with this. But in reality, when you speak, I'm made, as what is in the holy books, or some of the things we want to believe, did we, or did, the woman come out of the spare ribs. Why do you need a counterpart? Is it to confirm your own existence? Because if it's not there, if there is nothing else, how do you know you exist? You need the reflection. Or, or do you create the other to love you, that you can love yourself, that you can create the ones who love you more. As I said, this is in the holy books, in the writing of Baha'u'llah. He says, I made you to make children that they may love me. So, he even needs to be loved. And the love, which means to give to me unconditionally. So, why do you call it the dark side? Why don't you call it equal? Because without him, he has no existence. So in the end, there is no need to be afraid at all. Why are we afraid? I think some people are, but they begin to realize. What well, depends what you're afraid of. You only can be afraid of your own deeds which is your own judgment. If you've done nothing wrong, what are you afraid of? I get your point. You got it. Thank this you. This is what I said. You're welcome. This is what I said in very recent writing. We come and we bring our partners from another dimension in a soul state just to confirm that the soul we carry as prophet messengers of God exists in true dimension. In time, man will understand. But you should never be afraid. If you conduct your life correct, the ones who come to hurt you, they hurt themselves. Because it's very simple. It goes back to where it comes. It's a boomerang. If you understand how the boomerang works, boomerangs only hit the man on the head who throw it. <laughs> you understand? Yep. Okay, next question. There's a, there's a question, Mr. Kesh, um, about the plasmatic instant communications network. Um, what, what will be the nodes in the plasmatic instant communications network is the question. The nodes? Uh, n n nodes, N-O-D-E-S, as in, uh, uh, what would you call it? The, the, um, the tune, the, the, the noise. Mm, I think it's more the um, connecting the points. Points or connecting points. Yeah, that's a good word. Ah, connecting points in the. There is uh, no connecting point. When you start understanding the instant communication process, actually, I've shown it to you so many times, and so many times I wonder how come these people can't see it. It means you're not ready yet. In the past year and two years, in the teachings. So many times I have shown the instant communication system, universal instant communication system, and all of you, it just goes, as my little boy used to tell me, Papa, what you tell me doesn't go in here, it goes whoosh, because I'm not ready for it. <coughs> <coughs> Can somebody hear me downstairs? Can I have some water, please? Uh, so, 
the instant communication is very simple, extremely simple. There is no, nothing simpler than instant communication. I have to go to the bottom, I'm gonna go there. What is the instant communication? Instant communication is what you sent gets received instantaneously. What they send gets received instantaneously. What's going to happen? Make it a plasma. Each plasma has a given strength, gravitational magnetic field strength. If you send it at this strength, because this one operates at the same, it receives it. It's a direct line of communication. And I explained this many times. I've asked this question many times. Has anybody measured, ah, oh, thanks very much. Has anyone measured the gravitational magnetic field? Has anyone measured the flow of the field from these magnets? We don't have the knowledge, we just look at it, oh, it's something attracts itself. These are fields. Has anybody measured it? So if we can measure now that we understand how the plasma works and tune to one of the fields here because we know it's a strength gravitational magnetic field, you're down on the slide of the information carrier instantaneously. This is what I say, what they tell us, there is a star 10,000 lights away and we measured it. I answered one of them before and I answered the same, is the state of your mind 10,000 lights away. Because what I see is what comes from the planet, the star instantaneously. Because I see what is according to the strength of my gravitational magnetic field and is instantaneous. Last night and the night before, the shape of the second sun formation has tilted slightly. What does this mean? What's going to happen? The spread of the solar system structure on the second sun used to be very much like this. Now it has become like this. Much narrower on the top, but you see it in this. Mr. Kesh, we lost the audio there. Hello, Mr. Kesh, we've lost your audio. I think uh, your battery's uh, decided to die, yes. <laughs> There is something wrong with your system and the battery was flat. Can you hear me now? Yes. Sorry about that. Thank it's you. a modern technology. It's, I have to pay for your lack of work. If you would have produced the nano guns batteries I showed you this morning, it'll never run out. I don't need to go through this. It's Anybody true. It's, like a, 
it's a big um, issue that we need to put our engineering department uh, on. I think this this battery for the uh, for your um, uh, microphone there. No, you just need to build the Gans battery, which I showed you this morning. Please send yes, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should have a I great thing is to do with the Cash Foundation Manufacturing Canada. You better do it very quick. Thank you. I think that's a good job for us. Thank you very much, Mr. Kamal. Comment. So, if you look, the size of the uh, second sun in past few weeks has changed, and you see the expansion and nose in this. So, it means it's flattening, and if it flattens enough, my guys, goodbye, because it comes, it collapses, and it expands, and that's the end. The field forces transfer back on themselves. So you got to understand the process, how you measure, what you measure, the way you measure, and what each measurement means. You can have billions of communication lines at the same time from one system to another. It's exactly like your mobile phone and your mask. One mask receives so much information, but with this, you measure gravitational magnetic field of a system. And with this, the shape of the gravitational magnetic field gives you what is the next step to happen. Any other question? Hello, Mr. Kesh. Who's that? Hey, this is Emilio from Taiwan again. And I have a question about the plasma unit. Uh, when we turn it on, and when we connect all of our uh, electrical appliances to it, we are not supposed to turn them off. So would that cause wear and tear on, the, on our electric appliances? Or would the plasma flow make it so? So I'm going to stop you there. I'm going to stop you okay. there nicely. Thank you. Uh, it's very nice of you asking that question <laughs> because this brings to something which we need to explain. Wear and tear comes when you have electric vibration or electron vibration, I should call. Your plasma flow is continuous. Once establishes, there is no change. In plasma, you don't have vibration. You don't have tear and wear. You don't have electrical disconnection. And when you work in a plasma condition, electron energy is in a plasmatic form, not in a vibration form. When you connect these systems to your system, you don't get electric vibration. There is no electron vibration at all. Is plasmatic energy transfer equal of the electron as you need? And this is what, so tear and wear, more or less, I can say, adapting to the plasmatic transfer will might damage some system, or some system will not work, it does not damage. So it's very easy to understand. You cannot have tear and wear because everything else gets totally repaired, works in the plasma condition. This is what we said. The people who are using the system for the cars, instead of getting the car rusted, they are getting their cars nano-coated and there is no rust. Because it's a different dimension, different process. Tear and wear does not exist because there is no physical movement of electrons. And in so many ways, in the long run, even your chips, carbon in your chips gets nano-coated. Carbon in your chips will start working in the plasma. So when there is no vibration, there is no damage. If we can, and if our estimate is correct, what I said to somebody very recently, 
it'll come to the point that you get fed up with your electronics. You say, it's just, I'm fed up to look at it. I've got to change it because nothing happens to it. It doesn't deteriorate. It doesn't get broken. This is one of the biggest problems will face manufacturing industry, long lasting systems. At the beginning, if you don't get your toaster blown up or your toaster element breaking down because of the nano coating, <coughs> once it gets in the process of energy transfer in a nano level of a plasma, more or less the toaster is yours till the donkeys come home. We've seen it in the engine physical condition because it's a plasma transfer, even the cylinders are getting nano coated. This is the friction becomes less. This is what I proposed. We've seen this some time ago in a test. Because the same way as your wires are getting nano coated, when you have so much plasma going to your systems, they get nano coated too. Everything gets nano coated. If you're staying in your car too long, you get nano coated too. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tesh. And this brings me to my second question. Uh, if I connect my heater, would, and uh, when everything is working, would the heat be part matter state, part plasmatic state? And when the spring comes, how do I disconnect the heater to not to stop it from running? Then you have to stop it running because then it's not on your meter because you don't need it. Next time when you put it back on the winter time, for a few minutes, your meter runs and then it stops. Um, but you sir, will I... learn. We all will learn a new thing. Some of us, we complain that my system burn out because of it. Your system doesn't burn out. You have to find out where the shortage, where the gas material has coated it. As I said, it takes time. It takes, I think one thing you will notice, I would like you to do and let us know. When you connect these systems to like saving light bulbs, we like to know if you observe change in the intensity. Like if you had a, let's say 60 watt, does it look like more like 80 watt or 100 watt? What happened? The microphone is walking. Is this on? Oh, you yeah. can hear me. Yeah, I was explaining about a test I did with uh, lighting a car light bulb, 12 volt light bulb, with frequency versus uh, just uh, 12 volt uh, electricity. And the lighting is completely different. Uh, it's brighter, but you can look at it and it doesn't bother your eyes. It's completely changed. Uh, I was, when I was explaining about 432 hertz, it's a beautiful light. It's completely different. Please show us. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get a video from my friend. As soon as he finds it, I'll show you guys. So what is important, we need to understand more. Because we know the first thing you will find out when you have these systems, like the drill, get yourself the drill, try the drill before, feel the drill before you connect it to the system, and then connect it to the system with a normal current and then you see the feel is different, the power is more. People who are using these systems for their car, they tell you, it looks like I have a much better car. Even the wife says, I've got a new car. She says, no, I just connected something to it. Is it true? Have you tested it? You hear about the people. Giovanni is not here. I would ask him how much more he's saving. He started with 250 to 360 something liters. Now we're going to see how much more. How much we're extending the fuel. It actually saves him to do another two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. And then the fuel consumption will be equal to he never come here. It will be free flow. I'll explain to you in a very short time what's going to happen. Yes. Had uh, by Giovanni made the nano coat is a uh, fire. How has been done? Because uh, Giovanni doesn't do it always. No, the no, right Giovanni way. has done. Yeah, Giovanni. not doesn't do it always no. the correct way. 
and he put on Mecal because my son was wrong in the yeah. moving the yeah. monocoating. So he arranged it last time when I was here, and then my car was using um, a lot uh, l uh, less uh, foil. But now in the last week uh, has used the double. I don't understand why. Ask Giovanni. Look at your connection. He doesn't understand too. Where is the connection? It's the same. No one has touched it. Well, I don't know. This is something they do and I watch. This is not something I do to, because I've seen people doing it. Depends if you do it the right way and it's just a piece of wire or you allow it to flow in a different direction. No, but Giovanni has put everything last time. Yes. Starting from that moment, the car was going well, using you about the fuel, 50 percent. You used 50 percent. You were happy. Yes. Now you're back to normal. Yes, you're not. No, normal. not normal. More than normal now. Yes. But... Since uh, Saturday passed. Yeah. Measure it again next week and tell us again after that. I will check. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> this is a very, I'm watching this one because this is an idea, a concept, and these nanomaterials, if they don't receive energy, they have to absorb energy. That's why you put a gans on them. When you go in the car next time, try to put some gans on your uh, thingy. The few. The pen. What is the pen? I don't know. It's you who come up. Any excuse to blame anyone? What is this? This is the pen. Give it back to him. So why did you carry it when you were paying more? Is, you saw him last week and this happened? So don't, so don't use it. I don't know. <laughs> you people do so many different things and connect something to something else. We have not seen anybody reporting increase in the fuel. You're the first one. And now you think you found a reason for it? Throw the pen out while you're carrying it. That pen costs you 100 euro a week. Any other question? Uh, yes, Mr. Cash. I would like to address a question. Please. Oh, we have one, our, uh, one of our people present here. Yes. Uh, you want to introduce yourself here? Yes, you just uh, walked in today. Yes, I just all walked in today. My name is Paul and I'm from Romania. I just yeah. arrived uh, yesterday here. And I would like to address a question. It may seem a little bit off the uh, uh, subject. I but can go to sleep. Oh, no. I sit off the window. Well, uh, according to our present knowledge, uh, yes, the uh, gravitation, yeah, we have a downhill. Yes, we have a downhill. We put a car on that downhill. We stop the engine. And it goes up the hill. Uh, yes, it goes up the hill. How is that possible? We were talking about this a few days ago. What they tell me is illusion, is a misaligning of the eyes. I've seen this since I've been a child. Well, we have a video which shows not only the car. Let's say if it's a car, it's a metal one. It can be a magnetic attraction and goes up the hill. But uh, other objects goes also up the hill, for example. You've got to find the answer to this in, in scientific matter way. It's like the stones which in the desert in the United States move all the time and nobody could understand why. And now they have shown it is true with evaporation of the water at night, the cooling and heating up and the water moves. What do you tell me? I've seen it since I've been eight, nine years old. Where is that? I've seen that in Tehran. I spent a lot of time going up this hill to find an answer when I was a child. I cannot tell you why. They say it is illusion of the eye 
you're actually down the hill, you think you're going up the hill. Well, probably. Probably. I'll have to go but further I, and check. When I was in Tehran the last time, I asked somebody to take me there. They said it's not there anymore. Because don't well, forget, they flatten a lot of fields in Tehran. To build what buildings. I'm talking, it's a place in Romania. Yeah, we have the same in Tehran. Yeah. And uh, it has been filmed. It's a, a movie on the internet going on. Yeah. And you can see how the car goes down. Goes up. I was sorry, goes Plus, up. I've seen it, I can't explain it. But what what has been said, is I wanted to go and see it. Now I had the knowledge to prove if it's up the hill or down the hill. They told me it's not. It was just less than a kilometer away from where I was in Tehran for a few weeks. So I wanted to see it, but it wasn't there anymore. Well, anytime you are welcome to come to Romania, we'll show you the place. No Maybe problem. You... I've had a wonderful time in Romania, but I don't know when it'll be the next time. Okay. <coughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other question? Mr. Uh, Cash, yes. go ahead. I'll say you go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, Mr. Cash, I had another question about the heating system. You mentioned that once we connect it, we cannot pull it out. Otherwise, we will get a big electric bill. So, well, no, no. how do we... You don't get a big electric bill. I, I told you, you get the increase and then it goes back to normality. Just for maybe a few seconds. You don't ah, get okay. bill. You get the increase for the system to adjust itself and then it stops. It's just for a few seconds. Okay, this thank you, Mr. Cash. Experiment. I do have another question, Mr. Cash, about the zero point communication. Um, yesterday, I've, uh, me and my friend tried to brainstorm how we could build it or what it is. Um, so you said. What did you use to storm it? Say again? I said, what size brain did you use to storm it? More like a feeling or intuition, actually. Oh, no. um, w you said something that the mechanism, mechanism we already have inside our brains, and we were looking for the thing which is like the, the natural um, device, if you want to call it like this. Is it a pineal gland, or where do we look for it to replicate the mechanism? It's within your emotional part. Don't forget, when you feel, you don't need to hear. So it's brain located? It's in the center of your brain. It's the way you feel. You don't talk to yourself, I'm going to feel good. You just feel good. It's part of your emotional. <coughs> You're, the problem with you, our problem with <laughs> Call man is he has to hear the voice to believe he's heard something. It's very strange this afternoon. This lunchtime, we spoke with Carlos here, and somehow Carlos disappeared with the two Italians. We wanted to see him. Me and Caroline went totally independently to the center of uh, Valletta. And these three, we saw one of them standing outside the train station. And then they had a telephone call from Giovanni that we were looking for Carlos. We were there for totally different reason. And then Carlos says, here's us coming to the station. Am I correct? Totally moving different time moving different direction, different thing for different reasons. Mm -hmm. We ended up in the train station of the Paletta. The two Italians are here. And we, I, I said to Caroline, look, Anna is here. And so the Carlos must be here. By the time we go, Carlos was on the station platform. I never went on the platform, but he said, I could hear you coming. So I came back. Am I correct? Yeah? It's not as strange. Is when you understand how you communicate, you don't need the board language. Do you want to explain to you, who's got the microphone? Do you want to explain what happened? Because you're not going to give it to your wife there next door. Explain what happened. We, I never met Carlos. 
Nicholas was on the platform and he said, I could hear you. And I was wondering where I'm hearing you. We didn't even go there. Am I correct? Yeah, it was, was something, yeah, something like that. Something strange. Very strange. Uh, I know these feelings. It is, this is happening around the Keshe Foundation quite often. You don't need to talk because our intention is pure because I knew he, he, we had to see him before he goes. There was a specific reason and it was just there. The intention and the sound, it was there and it had to be done. You don't communicate, you feel the understanding. You even feel it as a noise. We didn't even go on a platform, we were in the shop. They walked into the shop and Carlos says, I could hear you talking. Am I correct? Yes, it's correct. Yes, it's just that you understand, it's the process that you don't need to talk. Talking, listening, communication, to be a noise is a habit of the man. Any other question? Um, <clears throat> yes, there's a question um, from the forum about, um, um, you see here, David is concerned about the wiring of the house in regards to the Maggrav power unit and uh, this idea of uh, the wiring becoming nano-coded. So he's um, questioning um, if we take the idea that eventually all wiring will be turned into plasma powering devices over time, would switches on things like power equipment, computers, etc., even work? Meaning, would it be possible for the wiring on both sides of the on off switch um, to become power producing that is not able to turn off the devices? Ah. Uh -huh. Maybe an addition to the knowledge is, I explained this morning, I don't know if we can go back to it. I'll see how far back. When we switch it off, we lose it, yeah? Yeah. Did we? Okay, can we have it online, please? Yeah, oh no, leave it, it's two minutes to draw one. I'm, I'm not that old, I think I can draw such a thing very quickly. We know this is happening, and in time, a lot of you will report this. If you remember, I explained this to you. Now this is your recorder. Now this is your recorder. Understanding from now on, in the coming time, you will be working on a plasma condition. And let's say this is you in the room. Or you leave the room. We explain the wireless communication. And now you say, what about if this gets another quarter two? And the wiring is another quarter two. Would the system still work when you want it? Yes. They're all working all over, nothing has changed. But the interesting thing is, if you add a factor to the system, would you be able to switch it on with your thoughts? Come on, think. Can you? 
what do you need in your system here to accept control from you? Do we buy units which we carry, which has our emotional strength on it? I want to play my game, but I don't want my son to touch it. My DNA. Why don't you imprint it with your emotion? The power of thought. In a way, the lady sitting there has the answer. She thinks she knows, but we teach her a little bit more. So what happens? Would the system carry on working? There'll be no difference because the annihilating each part in your component has different energy. You all brought an addition to it for the energy transfer. Remember something? Alex taught you something and a lot of you don't understand it yet. And I keep on going on it till you understand. You remember the orange banana and the alcohol he got himself drunk with? With your thoughts, because now you're working, the world of the communication, the world of music, the world of everything you do will be so different in two, three years time that you think we read this in, the, what do you call it? Fairy tale stories. Because you start, there is a group who's working on control of the system by thoughts, but they never understood the work of the nanomaterials and you can control the flight with your thoughts without the matter state. Because if you understood what I said a few minutes ago, has anybody measured the speed of the magnetic field flow from this magnet? Andrew is working so hard trying to get this sorted. It doesn't come together somehow. There is no speed. The speed of plasma increases. The question is, what's the speed of plasma? The speed of plasma is this. Order of magnitude here, if you want to the center, to the soul, you have no measurement for. Let's say if you want to go here, is something to the power of a million, a million, a million. Here is the power of 10 to a million. Here, is a power of, go backwards. Here is a 10 to the power of 100. Here is a 10 to the power of 10. And here you are 10 to the power of minus a million. And this is the speed of light or the speed compared to the speed of light. This is some matter. This is a matter somewhere here. And then you can see how it increases. If you can tune to what I explained here, you can tune to the different speeds of light or a plasma, then the distance you wanted to go from the Earth to the moon will be, let's say, 10 seconds. Here is one second or less. It's an order of magnitude. 
the wonderful time of the plasma will change everything. The only thing is you got to find out, are you on the North Pole, are you on the South Pole, are you gravitational or magnetical, you want to be attracted or to be repelled? At what strength you want to get repelled or attracted? Because the gravitational magnetic field, if you, if you, this is the Earth, the gravitational magnetical field that starts from here weakens and is strengthened as the gravitational field. That's the beauty of it, if you understand it. Still, magnetical field enters, but at a different strength. There's still gravitational field strength enters, but at different strengths. If you understand this, then you decide you want to travel on the magnetical or the gravitational. Do you want to go in at a speed that which is not very, uh, uh, what do you call it, hard, or you want to go at a very small speed? And don't forget, here, distance here is different strength. Every layer has its own strength. When you go, you travel to another planet, when you, Jesus, back again with the same problem. What happened? I'm there, look, I'm moving. Ah, I lost, oh, this is good. No, I'm going with my finger. Agree, agree. Come on. It's moving. A green. Ah, a green. A green. A green. We do this when you don't see us. It's just understanding my fingerprint. And number nine, right in the heart, is done. Okay. So what else? What are we gonna do now? Can I have a new page? Yes! Back. I touched the wrong thing. Now I know where I'm going to get it back. Mm -hmm. The mouse. The whole life problem is the mouse. Okay, now you see here, you still have the gravitational, you still have the magnetical. You still have the gravitational and the magnetical, the same layer. Here, in comparison to this, you are moving in comparison to this, you're getting attracted. Because if you put another planet here, we will play the same game. Do you connect this to this, or do you connect this to this? You can get attracted so fast into any environment, which is unbelievable. But you gotta find out how you communicate. The, the problem you will find out is very, very easy. If you want to understand instant communication, find yourself the brain of an animal. Open it and look in the structure, especially birds. It gives you a very, very good indication. Any other question? What's the time? Five o'clock? Would like anybody else to teach? She does. Don't forget, next week, um, most of the teaching will be done by Caroline in respect to 
conformation transformation of the plasma. And uh, I'll be taking a back seat and uh, we'll see what happens. It's to do with what you call <coughs> the gravitational magnetic field, very much like this, of the, the human body, where here you call it gravitational magnetic field of the Earth, or in the body form, we call it the aura. She tries to teach you how, because this is part of the teaching of the private section, which is the Institute of Cash Foundation, the Space Review Institute, the private teaching. And the students on that side will be told totally next week how to create, to bring gravitational magnetic field of the body into the position that we can create condition of the plasma without physicality. In a way, the way your soul works, you will be taught how to do it, how you can see it, how you can concentrate it, because this is needed if you are going to the next step of the development of the spaceship without matter state. As I said earlier, I put her in the center of the Caroline core, now she's out of the box to see what it can be done. In so many ways, she's, she'll teach you how to create the condition for yourself to observe the field flow across your environment and then how to concentrate it and then how you can and then I'll teach you how to bring the field forces of the plasma of your own body in intention, emotion and physicality to physical appearance of a plasma. And then you have to learn how to control it and then by the control of the plasmas, you don't need the creation of the, the star formation. As you remember, you having the three, four reactors, you allow this physicality to be non-tangible, and then we'll see the creation. We're going heading direction of the creation of the spaceship without physicality. So most probably the teachings from next week will become a bit weird if you are not a student of the institute, but if you are, you will start learning how to create these plasma fields and then when you understand it, then you understand the line of communication, how you create tangibility out of non-tangible field forces, which is the indication and the four forces within your own body. We all can do it. If you realize a part of the teaching which has been going on, but maybe we can talk about it in that other way, it's me who wants to see you. It's not you who wants to see, to show yourself to me. We decide as human beings to see each other according to each other's field, but we decide not to see the other beings which are here because we don't have no line of communication with them. If you understand the difference, in the next few weeks in the teachings in the institution, institute the teaching, you will understand how to create field forces without tangibility. But the first thing is first, you have to learn how to control these field forces within the environment of your own body. And then understanding comes to move back very much into what we went this morning to go from uh, different magnetic fields into total non-matter explanation and work. And then we go very much in this dimension where we use the gravitational magnetic field of the ganses in the reactors to create the 129 condition. Now we teach you how to go from this condition, what you call aura, to creation of physical tangibility of what you call spatial. You went in the same process as I showed you before, you went from matter state You went from matter state into the gans, into the plasma, 
Now your body has created the gravitational magnetic fields, which you can create the Gans state of the matter in the shape of what you need, the way your body does. Heart tissue, bone tissue, bone cell, brain cell, anything you want to call it. At the interesting time, now it starts. Any other question? Can you keep going, Mr. Cash? Please, can you keep going? Where do you want me to go? Would you like to come with me to Planet Zeus? I'd like to stop over there. <laughs> um, very far. It took me a long time to get here. Going back takes a long time. Don't forget, Planet Zeus is not even in this universe. So, next question. If you're on the private teaching on the Institute of Keshe Foundation Space Institute, uh, knowledge seekers teaching, you will already have moved to this stage. You are already here. It's just now trying to show you how to go back down. Uh, there was a question in the chat of what what was the name of the Romanian boy from a few minutes ago, Daniel Romania S. So I'm presuming he's also Romanian. Oh, there are three of them. It was three yesterday, one left, another one took place. Do you have a microphone? I see the camera. One who told you on Monday or Tuesday, the professor has already left. Ah, oh, they want to see. Would you like to introduce would you like to introduce yourself who you are from Romania? Okay. Uh, as I said earlier, I'm Paul and I'm from Romania. And what was your They want to concern? know who you are. Ah, just who I am. Yeah. Well I'm just just a, a visitor. Just a knowledge seeker like all of you. Nothing else, nothing more. Anything in particular you want to know? Um, By the way, uh, it's, Sandor, it's Sandor talking here. We have on Facebook uh, we, a study group uh, in Romanian language. Yes, I already explained to them. They'll get in touch with you, Sandor. Thank you very much. Thank we you have very much. Every Friday evening we have meetings and uh, from Monday we start also Hungarian group. Every Friday evening we will have a meeting on Zoom and teaching in uh, their own language. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. So we have a different group. Caroline just walked up and said something to me, which if we have time, we're going to show it to you. If you remember, as I've told you many times, we have hundreds, thousands of pictures, videos from the cases we've been through. Different condition, different tests. And one of these pictures, which we've told you before, is how you create the regrowth of the toe. She just found the pictures. If you can get it up here, I'll try to go selectively through some we share a screen that you can see how body organs can be grown. But you got to understand something. Again, goes back to the emotion. When you go to the emotion of the man, is the emotion which decides if you want to have a toe or not to have a toe. By having a toe, I will not get the attention when I get when I don't have a toe. And you'll be amazed how people prefer not to have a toe, that they get the attention. With you and me, we cannot even imagine this. Would you like to lose a toe to get attention from him? Look, I'm hurt. I don't have a finger. Some people do. No, it depends on our need 
for attention. This case, if it comes up, otherwise we show it to you in the private teachings in the Institute of Teaching, is that with having the toe, the lady lost all the, what do you call it, uh, free health care she had, everything else she was getting attention for, putting in a push chair, being taken around in a wheelchair, all disappeared. So she decided, if I grow it any further, I'm not going to get anything. So that's what I want to stop. And seven years down the line, the toe is still there. We can still see inside of it, no infection, but no one has ever seen inside of a body of a man. I can show it to you. The pictures are there. So Caroline has found it. If we can show you the next few minutes, otherwise we'll show you in the next teaching. It's the same story, as I said. You give a sight back to a blind girl. She says, no, I want to stay blind. You allow a woman to walk away from uh, epilepsy, but she says, no, I would like to pretend to be epileptic because I get attention through it. Doesn't matter, I don't take medicine, <laughs> but I would like to have the shakes. I can give you so much videos of people who want to be pretending to be sick that they get the attention, doesn't matter what. I can show you a video of a woman with an epilepsy attack, which she has no epilepsy, but she decides to have an epilepsy as 10.20, 10.27, every Saturday and Sunday. And I didn't time, write the timetable. She gave us the timetable, 10.20, Every Saturday, 10.21, I said, how did you measure it? My boyfriend wrote it. I said, ah, huh? I've got a headache. That's the story. And she goes through a full epileptic attack. They call the ambulance, everything else. Goes to the hospital, back home, start again, Sunday morning the same. A lot of people, like to be sick in there for this to damage with it that they get the retention of existence. Any other question? Would you like to be sick? No. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Cash. This is Sandy, and I have a question about. Uh... Oh, hello, Mrs. Westinghouse. <laughs> yes, Mr. Harrison, I'll see you with me. Uh, we were... <laughs> well, um, when we take the water from GANS uh, and we make the patches, we have the information from uh, the GANS, but um, it, it isn't exactly the same strength as the GANS. I'm sort of wondering how much can we just use the information of information opposed to the full strength First of all, as a student as a knowledge seeker you've been here i'm wondering why you use the information word you carry a plasmatic gravitational magnetic field of strength which has a certain strength it doesn't carry information whoever attached information to guns and water is the same guy i said the ormus. The speed of light is the maximum speed. Okay, well, the, the water becomes a GANS because of a GANS in it. When no, you pour the, the distilled water, water. The water carries the gravitational magnetic field of the matter which you have subjected it to it. I explained this yesterday on the lab to our Romanian professor before he goes. Understand this. If you understand this, anybody talks to you about the information, you will immediately can clearly, as a scientific reasoning, explain to them that there is no information carrier. If I have this, you have to see it in three dimensional, otherwise, it has no meaning. And secondly, you have to understand 
the whole totality. I'm not going to chop my fingers for you a lot. I'll try to use a lighter one. Can we have the camera? You need to bring the camera very close. You can't come so close? Okay, I'll try to be as good as possible in this way. You see, if I put three magnets of the same strength, you see what it does. Now, if I add another strength, look at the distance between the magnets. If you can't see it, I'll show you by measurement. This is two fingers, roughly. Now look what happens when I bring a bigger magnet into operation. There is just about three fingers. Here is about two. In respect to two, the same. Here is three. If you understand this, I go on the board and explain to you something very, very simple. When you have the matter, and then you nano-coat it, the nano-coating will be like this. If I add gravitational magnetic field of a different strength, now the size of the plasma changes because now it has pulled more. Now you see the distance difference. Here you have this distance, there the distance is different. If you add more energy, both gravitational and magnetical to it, you see what happens to it. When you say you add information, it means you add gravitational magnetic field into the matter. So the strength becomes more, the separation point becomes more, and in that separation, it shows itself different. You don't carry information. You just add to the field of strength, magnetical or gravitational, and then to you, this had a different structure. Now, because you see it different, you try to make all sorts of nonsense. You add information to it, you add vibration to it, you add this and that to it. So, when you add information, you literally is like a nanomaterials. A copper will have this distance, or let's say, then plutonium will have that and something stronger will have that. So when you create or you add gravitational magnetic field to the plasma of the water in the matter state, you create a different spacing. And that different spacing shows itself different than what you're used to. You don't change, you don't take, you, you don't add information. Information means adding gravitational magnetic field. Have you found it? Hmm? So when we add the flavor of banana or so forth, we're just changing the positioning. No, 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 no. I want it here. Can I have it here, please? Have you? Can I have it here, please? Can you put it on the screen of that and I can control it, please? Sorry, what did you say, Sandy? I said, so when we put the banana on the top and we get the taste of the banana in the water, that has changed the positioning of the molecular structure of the water. The, uh, no, they have added the gravitational magnetic field to the atomic structure of the water, which that spacing indicates the taste of banana. Okay. That's all. Stop. Let me see. Can you take this off the screen? Just give me one second and then...
switch off the board. Okay, we're trying to get you some because I know some of you have been waiting for this on the medical side. We show it to you what it is. I'm going to see it and I understand what I'm going to show you. Excuse me, can I sit down? I'm an old man. Yeah. Uh, where do we go? Which pictures? No. With the arrows, okay. Okay. No, I have to see. Okay. Okay, this is the second operation. Before this operation, it goes back on the same. No, I don't think these pictures can be seen by public. It's too bad. It's too bad. Okay, we go. We're gonna show you some horrendous pictures, but. You have to understand this is on the line of science. This is what we've done in growing it tall. And it's just the same pictures. Is there another file? Is there another file here? No, there should be another file. There's another file. Okay, is there a file? Can you go to the key? Go to the key. Ah, this is one file. Okay. No, it's the same one. Kind of, yeah. It's the same one, it just goes, it goes through the human If you look at it, this is the one we see for. Yeah. Okay. What we're going to show you, we're going to see as part of, go back to the beginning, please. <clears throat> this is, um, okay. This one you see is, you can go public. Okay, go on the screen. We have a lot of these pictures. I don't know what you see there. What does it show? Okay. Yeah. Okay, I think you know the wrong way. Should go this way up. Okay, can we go on? Is it on? Can you see it? Is that what you see here? This is the extreme technology is applied seven years, six years ago. This body produces only uh, calcium instead of anything else and deposits it. It's led to the gangrene. You can see all the toes are nearly gone. And they were going to amputate the, from the ankle. This uh, first operation was done. The toe was amputated, but because of the calcium, not understanding by the nurses that this is a different case, we had to go through the second operation, which went further low. And the doctor said there is no chance in the in in United Kingdom, they were going to amputate both hands and both feet or legs on the knee in that coming week. And a small introduction of the process of regrowth and changing the characteristics of the work of the parietal gland, which stopped the body. This process going since 1975, they could not find any solution for it. And then you see the whole operation. These are pictures in between. This is over a three months period. <coughs> you see, you can change the body information that it doesn't take any more calcium, doesn't produce any more calcium. And you can see slowly by putting the system across, you can start producing the framework, getting rid of all the gangrenes on the fingers that there was no need for amputation. You see, the, this is the lady. She came in in a wheelchair amputation on a Wednesday in London, Tuesday night flight here. Three months later, walks home with the toe intact, with arm and legs. And you can see the condition of the toe. There were nothing there, 
and you can see even the end of the gangrenes. These are developments. We have a full uh, picture system, some like thousands of videos and pictures taken from this system. The lady now has a tool. We can show you the pictures if you find more of it, that a condition, you still see the black and green in the flesh. We have grown this to a toe to the first, uh, what do you call it, joint of the finger at the toe. So you see the process, you see the gangrenes, the hands were to be amputated because of the gangrene and you see the changes. This was just picked up by Carolyn. There is no damage to the toes. You can manage to filter and for 30 years, 35 years, doctors in England and Europe fought to save this life and it took less than three months to make it work. And you can see it, the system, you can actually see the toe as goes. We have pictures where you can see inside the toe. And you see there is no mark anymore even on the fingers of the gangrene where they were going to amputate the hand for. It's, uh, it's uh, important for the medical side to understand this. If you see the hole, it actually grows, the bone grows in it, the whole structure. We, we will show you further. You can see the toe growing there. If you look at, if you remember the cutting before, if you see here, you see the growth of the, the, the what do you call it, the toe. If you remember, just switch it off after this, please. If you, this is a very clear cut. This is one of the odd pictures in there. You can grow any part of human being if they want and they wish to do it. Where is my thingy? There it is. If you see, this is the line of amputation of the big toe. And you see how much we go on it. And this is the toe, you see everything is gone. And this is the line where you saw the cutting. We have enough knowledge in the foundation to grow any organ, but it's the man who has to come to understand that it's possible. And uh, go backwards, please. You can see how much growth is there. This is, the doctors were totally puzzled how you can grow so simple. Go back. No, you're going up and down, go back. This one. Okay. No. Is your arrow going to stop? Okay, go from further. No. You see how beautifully it's growing up. Go back further. Go back. You see, it grows without infection. Purely stays. And then when it comes up, you see the cut of the angle of the toe, go back up the other way, which you came down the opposite. Go back the way you came. You see the line of the cut, go up. No, go up. You see how clean it stays. The body immune system works on its own to protect it. One more up, more up. You see how the toe is coming up. Go up, one more. You see? No bleeding, no pain, no phantom pain, nothing. This is what we show. This only costs now to produce a system to give a man a toe less than 10 cents. We're not talking about millions. We're not talking about huge team looking after. If you understand, you see the cut. It's amazing how simple the knowledge has come. You can grow anything. Go up, you see it growing up, growing out. You see the point of cut. Thank you very much. Just switch it off, please. These are not miracles. This is understanding. 
very simply that every single structure atom has a line and how you want to change this line in respect to its environment. So you created the two lines, you allow the information to carry to the neural system, and as it comes, this is the plate. As the information comes, this is exactly what the animals do. Animals create one nano layer here, and this is their physical body. The reptiles use a nanomaterial to absorb all the information here that the body does not see, there is no existence. So the tail keeps on growing. Now we have developed the technology where we can do the same. As I said, hopefully by the end of this month in November, we will give 100,000 of these units to hospitals across Italy and discretion of the doctors to use it. If they amputate the child's finger and they think they can give him a chance not to have that lack of a finger, it's just five minutes putting it on and looking after it over three, four or five months and the finger should go. It just follows the natural progress. And now you see in the video, we don't talk. What we don't know, we don't talk. What we share you is exactly what is going to be done. Any other question? Or we call it the day for today. Mr. Quesh, I had a question about memory. Yes, I can't remember. <laughs> uh, it was a question out of the Q&A, and it was a, a question from Umar, and he was asking about, you mentioned something about that you uh, were working on your memory a long time ago. And uh, what, were, what, what, what was exactly that you did as far as the CO2 GANs or uh, methodology? long time. If we teach you, then people abuse it. When it comes, we teach it in no time. No problem. Any other questions? Um, I think we should wrap it up here. Uh, looks like we're on the, on the dot for uh, time here and we could probably continue all day with questions, but uh, I think we got most of them answered at this point. Thank you very much. Thank you for today, and hopefully in time, we should be able to answer a lot of the questions which has been mystery to our scientific world in a logical way, not just because we say so. Thank you very much for today. If you achieve to manage to finish your uh, power units, please send a copy to the Cash Foundation that it goes on a forum than just putting it on your Facebook or your face, whatever you use media. You learn it from here, bring it back, and we can share it with the public and it's there for people to see how it works, what it is, what they have to do. Thank you very much for your time. See you tomorrow. I'm not teaching tomorrow, so it's my day off. Have a nice teaching time. Enjoy yourself. I'm not here on Monday. Most so, um, well, the Most teaching tomorrow will be Tuesday, Friday. Wednesday, and a Thursday. Hello? Hello? I said, I'm not here tomorrow. I'm not here on Monday. Most probably I won't be here Tuesday, and a Wednesday, and a Thursday. And we'll see you when we come back. Thank you very much. Okay, is the teaching tomorrow going to be private or will that be yes, uh, the private? We finish private. with a public teaching okay. and any results, anything comes up next uh, Tuesday afternoon, which is a public teaching you can show if, okay. Very <coughs> good. if I'm not here. And the same on the Thursday, if I'm not here, you can carry on with the development. You can also send an email with picture links and video links to blueprint at keshfoundation.org. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Vince. Good. Thank you, Vince. Thank you indeed. Yep. By the way, we leave it to you. We might have a news for you next week. A very good one. Thank you. Bye. Okay, we'll leave that mystery for now.
Thank you, Mr. Cash, and thanks to everybody uh, who uh, contributed today, and thanks to all of our, our participants and viewers on live stream and YouTube and everywhere else around the world. Okay, um, that'll end it for today. That's Thursday, November 5th, 2015. It's the afternoon session of the Cash Foundation Spaceship Institute. And we'll see people on the public session on Tuesday of uh, next week. Okay, bye for now and the live stream.